Design patterns were conceived in the 90s, when object-oriented programming was extremely popular. So naturally, design patterns rely on classes and inheritance quite a lot. However, programming languages have evolved. Python not only has classes, but also tuples, dictionaries, protocol classes and data classes. What I'm going to do in today's video is take one design pattern, the factory, strip it down completely until we arrive at the design principles that are behind the pattern. And then I'll investigate if it's possible to do the same thing, but better using modern Python constructs instead of the traditional classes. Spoiler alert, it's possible, but there are a few trade-offs. Before we start, I have a free guide for you that helps you make better design decisions in seven simple steps. You can get it at ariancodes.com slash design guide. I've tried to keep it short and to the point so you can get the information quickly and apply it immediately to what you're working on. So ariancodes.com slash design guide. Now let's look into the example. Here you see a basic example of using a factory pattern. This is an example that I covered in an earlier video. I put the link to that video in the description below. Basically the idea is we have a video exporter, which is an abstract base class that has lossless version and a H264 BP version and a high quality version. And we have an audio exporter that has different formats as well, AC, wave, etc. And then we have the actual factory, which is also an ABC that has abstract methods. One to create a video exporter, another to get an audio exporter. Then we have a fast exporter and a high quality exporter, which are both subclasses of this exporter factory. And then finally, we create an object a dictionary in this case to contain these different factories. We have a method called read factory that reads an desired output quality from the uh, input. And then when we do the export, it gets the factory, it retrieves the video and audio exporters and then prepares and does the export. So that's the whole idea. If I run this code, it's very simple. I can just enter some value here. You also see it covers the case that if I write something else, I'm going to get an error. So let's try low and then it's going to export audio and video data in a low quality format. So now what we're going to do is take a closer look at the factory pattern and then apply modern features from Python and see what the options are. The most important design principle behind the factory pattern is to separate creation from use. Here's a UML diagram. So what the factory allows you to do is to inject objects of a certain subtype into a part of an application that then uses those objects without knowing what they are exactly. Doing this helps reduce coupling because it means that if you want to introduce new kinds of objects, then you can inject them into that same application without having to change the code. A related principle is the single responsibility principle. And that also applies here. It basically means that we don't want to have the job of creating something and using something in the same place. Those are two separate responsibilities. And the final principle that also plays an important role in the factory pattern is the open closed principle. And this says that we want to be able to extend the application without having to change the code too much. So it should be open for extension, but closed for modification. And that's exactly what the factory pattern achieves. In this example, you might want to extend the code by introducing new examples. So you don't have to change the original code for that. You can simply introduce a new factory. The first change that we're going to look into is using protocol classes instead of abstract base classes. Now, what is a protocol? This was introduced in Python 3.8 and it behaves a bit like an interface if you know language like TypeScript or uh, Java. The difference is that you don't need to explicitly implement the protocol in a class. You don't need to inherit from it to use it. And the result is that your class definitions become a bit shorter. ABCs rely on so-called nominal typing. And that means that if you want types to be related in some way, you need to explicitly write that down. Like for example, inheriting from a particular class. Protocols are different. They rely on structural typing. And this means that Python considers objects of matching types if their structures are the same. For example, if objects have the same methods. This matches a lot better with Python's runtime type checking system 
uh, that treats basically objects the same if they look and behave the same within that particular context. And this is also what's called duct typing. So let's change the example and start using protocols and see what the effect is. So you see here we have the abstract base class and abstract method that we imported here. So what we're going to do is add an extra import. We're going to import protocols. So we've now imported the protocol type. I'm going to delete this because we won't need this anymore. And now video exporter is going to be a protocol class. There we go. And we're going to remove this abstract methods here. So it's apart from it being a subclass of protocol, it is exactly the same. It has a prepare export and the do export method. And now for the classes that implement this protocol, that adhere to this protocol, we don't need to write explicitly anymore that they're a subclass of video exporter. So I'm going to remove this. There we have our different types of video exporters that we now use without inheritance, which is how you would do things by default when using protocols. For audio exporters, we're going to do the same thing. So that's the protocol. We no longer write abstract methods. And when we're creating these subclasses, or actually we're not creating subclasses anymore, we're simply removing the inheritance relationship and let Python's structural typing do the job. And the same thing we're going to do with the actual factory class. So that's also a protocol without abstract methods. And let's remove the inheritance relationships as well. You can, by the way, still use inheritance even when you have a protocol class, but uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. So here we go. Uh, the rest of the code actually doesn't change at all when you're using protocols. This is simply a way of changing the relationship that exists between these different exporters and the factories. Let's run this code one more time to check that this is still working. Exporting this in master quality and this still works as expected. Overall, I think in Python, protocols are the way to go over abstract base classes. Until recently, I've been relying on abstract base classes in most of my videos. But as you can see, protocols offer the same functionality and even offer a bit of extra flexibility. There are a few caveats of protocols that you need to be aware of. For one, if you're not using inheritance, it also means that you're losing some of the capabilities that inheritance offers, like doing partial implementations in a superclass and things like that. If you're not explicitly inheriting from a class, then the type checker in your IDE can't help you with pointing out errors in your method definitions either. Second thing is that you can use protocols like an abstract base class and actually inherit from them. You can even add the abstract method decorator to the method inside the protocol class and that also is kind of a problem in the sense that I was expecting protocol to be more like an interface but for Python but it seems it's way more than that and that also kind of muddies the water a bit and I think that possibly leads to confusion in the way that people are going to want to use this so what I would recommend is if you can get away with it use protocols like an interface so don't inherit from them directly, but simply use them to define a contract of what a method is expecting in terms of an object with methods, etc. If you have to use inheritance, I'd say use abstract base classes because they're more the target use case for that scenario, even though you could use it with protocols. But it's also nice to keep things separate. But to be honest, I'm not really sure what to recommend here because what is the exact future of protocols is not entirely clear to me. If you have a suggestion of what the best practice should be for when we should use protocols versus abstract base classes, let me know in the comments. So the second change we're going to do is to use tuples instead of these factory classes. So you see that if we take a look at these actual factory classes and what they actually do is they're basically not a lot more than being a container of objects. A factory is basically a container of a video exporter and an audio exporter object, or actually of functions that create those objects for us. And we're using the subclass mechanism here to create different variants of those video and audio exporters, but we could 
basically simplify this a lot by not using classes here, but using tuples, which are also kind of containers of objects. So instead of passing factories around, we could pass tuples around and still have the advantage of not having to know the specific types of video and audio exporters that we need. So let's change this to use tuples instead of these factory classes. And that means we're going to have to change this dictionary to return tuples instead of factories. So let's start with the low quality factory. And then this is going to be a tuple of the H. 264 BP video exporter class and the AAC audio exporter class. So it's a tuple of classes and then we're going to call the initializers later on. And for the high quality exporter tuple, I'm going to do the same thing. So this is actually an A2, H264 high video exporter and a AAC audio exporter. And then we have the master quality, which is yet another tuple, which is a lossless video exporter and a wave audio exporter. So this gives us a bunch of tuples that contain combinations of video and audio exporters. So let's see what we need to change then in the read factory method, because this shouldn't return an exporter factor anymore because we're not using that, we're using tuples. So this should return a tuple of video exporter and audio exporter. So let's declare that type here. So this is a tuple and it's a tuple containing a video exporter and an audio exporter. So now we need to also slightly change the code here because we're not returning directly the factory object because those are classes, they're not um, actual instances. We're going to create the, the instances here. So let's first extract the classes from the, fa the factory's dictionary and then we're going to create the instances. So we have, let's say, video class and audio class. And this is factories of exporter quality. So you see that video class is a type uh, a video exporter and audio is a type audio exporter. And then what we're going to return is a tuple that calls the initializer method. Right, so now read factory returns a tuple and the tuple is created here from these two classes that we got from the dictionary. And then let's look at this part, so we have a do export method that at the moment gets an exporter factory. So we should change this so that now it gets also a tuple of video exporter and audio exporter. And then retrieving the exporter, we can do that again by destructuring the tuple. Like so, and then I'll delete these two lines. And actually in the main function, we don't need to change anything because read factory that gives us a tuple and do export uh, expects a tuple. So uh, this should all just be fine. So let me run this code and just verify that this works. And you see that the code that's responsible for doing the actual export still doesn't need to know anything about particular subclasses, but specific types of video audio exporters. It also doesn't need to know anything about the possible combinations that there are, because the, um, uh, the factory's dictionary is uh, hiding that information for us. And because we're now we're using tuples, it means that we're not going to need all of these factory pattern classes anymore. So let's remove them. So we have the exporter factory we don't need anymore. And let's remove this as well. So the master we don't need anymore there. There we go. So we've now reduced the amount of code that we need to write uh, by using tuples. There's a couple of things you need to be aware of when you're using tuples. The first is that they're simply containers of objects for which they're doing a very good job. They're very efficient. But if you want to add, for example, configuration data to a tuple, let's say you want to have some settings of your video or audio exporter alongside those objects, 
then this can become ugly pretty quickly. A second issue is that all combinations of video and audio exporters are now explicitly written down in the factory's dictionary. If you have a lot of these combinations, this may lead to a loss of cohesion in that part of your application. And the final thing with tuples is that you need to remember the order of the exporters everywhere. So video exporter first, then audio exporter. It's not a big deal, but it's yet another point where you could make a mistake. You could use named tuples to get around that, but I actually prefer a nicer option that uses data classes and the call dunder method. So let's look into that. So final change I'm going to make is to add back a bit of flexibility by replacing tuples with data classes. And that's gonna provide us with an easier access to video and audio exporters, but still allow us some of the flexibility that classes offer us, such as setting parameters or having more control over object construction. So first let's import data classes so we can start using them. There we go. And now let's scroll down. I'm going to create two classes. And the first class is a media exporter class. So this is a data class. So we have media exporter, which has two objects, a video exporter object and an audio exporter object. And instead of a factory creating on the fly instances of video and audio exporter, it's going to create an instance of media exporter for us. So what we'll do is create another data class, which is going to be the actual factory for these media exporters. So let's call that a media exporter factory. And this is going to have two classes, just like we had in the tuple. So we have a video class, just import type for that. So that's a video exporter class and we have an audio class. And that's of type audio exporter class. There we go. So that's our factory. And now to make things simple, what we could do is use the call dunder method to make it really easy to construct video and audio exporter instances for us. So I'm going to define the call dunder method here. And that's going to return a media exporter instance. Doing that is really simple. We're creating a media exporter. And that's going to get a video class and audio class calls that's going to construct for us the specific video and audio exporters that we need. So that's our media exporter factory class. And now instead of these tuples, what we do is we're creating media exporter factories instead. And I don't need to change anything here because that's basically already there. It expects two classes, video and audio class. I need to paste it there and let's also go there. So now we've created our media exporter factory. And that means that read factory also needs the media exporter factory. So that's what it's going to return. And then we can go in and simplify this again, because now we simply need to return the object that's in the dictionary. Let's remove this and this line we don't need anymore. So now read factory is going to return a media exporter factory and i think i have an extra space there that i need to remove there we go so the do export function now won't get a factory anymore it's going to get a media exporter so let me remove all of this and it's going to get an exporter and that's of type media exporter and we don't need to retrieve video and audio exporters explicitly anymore, but we can simply call exporter.video. So let's change that here. And the same thing for the audio. There we go. And let's do the same thing here. And this is not correct. And the only thing we need to change still is that in the main function, so here we're creating the media exporter factory. And when we do the export, 
we actually use the factory to create the actual media exporter. So let's add a, a line here to create the media exporter. And because we defined the call dumber method, we can simply call the factory as follows. And this is going to create our media exporter for us. And then the only thing we need to do is replace factory by media exporter. And let's run this code one more time. So you see the effect is exactly the same, except now because we're dealing with data class, we have much easier access to video and audio components of the exporter and we're not making any mistakes in the ordering or something like that. There's still the issue that Media Exporter Factory explicitly calls the video class and audio class initializes here so you still have little control over the actual parameters that you might optionally want to pass into these uh, initializers so you can do that. But of course eventually you could create if you wanted to subclasses of media exporter factory, but then you're kind of going back to the original factory pattern idea. So overall, if you look at what we've achieved now is that we've been using protocol to simplify the inheritance relationships between the different exporter types, which I think is really nice and makes the code really nice and simple. It still behaves like a factory. So the, Part of the code that does the actual export, like the do export method, doesn't know anything about the specific type of video and audio exporters that it gets. And by using data classes and the uh, combination of the call dunder method, we have a very simple, clean way of creating our exporters that we need. So there's also a disadvantage to using data classes as opposed to something like tuples or even name tuples, which is that tuples generally are a bit more lightweight. So they have faster element access and use less memory than data classes. And they're immutable and data classes are not. So if those things are important for you, use tuples. But personally, in most cases, I would actually go with data classes because I think it just is a nicer solution overall. So protocols integrate very well with Python's doc typing system and are often the preferred solution over abstract base classes, though it's not entirely clear where they're going with this in the future. Tuples are also really nice, but they're very basic containers of objects and they open up possibilities of losing cohesion in some parts of your application because of that. And finally, if you're using data classes with the call Dunder method, it's also a really nice clean approach to achieve the same thing. But data classes also use a bit more memory and are a bit slower at accessing the elements than say a tuple or a named tuple. Let me know in the comments which of these versions you prefer. And if you have another suggestion for solving this using Python features, I'd be very interested to hear more about it. So please post it in the comments. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching, take care and see you next time.